So you're 25. That's when you start, and you, your style is these. As I said, you you love one liners, and you love. Um, there are comedians that tell stories. They find their way to the laughs here and there on their journey, and that is not you. No, you I was are, always my my love language is the one liner. Yeah, I'm trying to develop something. I mean, in the new special, I'm trying to develop some longer stories and so because I've got a good fastball, but I don't have much in in the bag. I wanted to kind of develop a little bit, so I, I really kind of made a decision a couple of years ago. Try different things. All the time. I try different styles. Try different, you know. Try and mix it, which I've kind of done a little bit. But it's I was very influenced by Stephen Wright and Emo Phillips and Rita yep. Rudner and all those kind of great gag to gag comics. And I think there's something. I don't know. I think there's something wonderful about that. You're not wasting anyone's time. Oh my on god! Stage. I mean, I You're remember just being in knocking out the <laughs> knocking out the hits, laugh to laugh. When I was a uh, teenager and seeing Stephen Wright and just and he comes from Boston, yeah, which is course, where I'm yeah. from, and just the. The jokes, um, they they felt like little jewels. Like you know, they just they they were they were dense and they were so smart. And he would just keep handing them out, and you felt like this is this guy is is holding a sack of rubies, and he yeah. just keeps taking them out and 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 passing them to the audience. That's what how it felt to me. Yeah, I'm seeing him like just the, being blown away by yeah the power of his uh, intellect. And then his delivery was so self-assured and and also very much nothing special happening here. I'm just a guy talking. Yeah. And then these amazing. So so he influenced you. Oh, you, and you mean, sang, Emo Phillips as well. I don't think gets, Emo gets great. quite. Emo, I think, was bigger in the UK in the 80s than he was here. He was like, he was quite a big deal. Yeah. He was great. Yeah. But then I loved all the stuff like Billy Connolly. I love Bill Hicks. But in the end, your sense of humor chooses you. Mm -hmm. it, it, I think what you laugh at is kind of it's very um, it's very exposing. Mm -hmm. uh, and I like kind of dark stuff and I like short one liners and that's what I can kind of go to very easily. But it's, it's weird. You don't like if I was if I was making a plan at the beginning of my career, I would have been a storyteller because I only need five ideas to fill an hour. Brilliant. Right. Right. <laughs> I would have been much more cost effective. Right. Whereas I'm running about 300 jokes in an hour. It's a lot of work. Yeah. Although, um, yeah, it's easier to build from Lego than marble. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Let's call it what it is. Also easier to change your mind. You just detach that piece, the yeah. yellow piece, and put in the blue piece. Well, it's a lot of kind of beta testing. It's a lot of, you know, in my act, it's a lot of beta. Oh, is that word better than that word? Well, I'll try it a different way tonight, a different way tonight, a different way tonight. Trying new stuff all the time. So you're constantly kind of writing. So now we get to this other issue, which is you do a Netflix special. I imagine because of the uh, quality and density of the jokes in your act, you do the special. And unlike 70 years ago, when you could then tour with that act for 15 years on vaudeville, or actually some people would have a really good hour and a half and they would, or, or hour and 15 minutes, and they would tour with it for 50 years. Yeah. Because that was their act. That's an amazing footage of like these guys called Morecambe and Wise. Yes, I know Morecambe and Wise. UK yeah. double act. And yeah. it's them at the Croydon uh, Fairfield Halls where I get to play. And it's them, it's them doing their hour. And they never put it on TV. They were huge TV stars. And they never put it on TV. They just recorded it once. It's like one shot of them doing it. But it's a perfect Vaudevillian hour. Yeah. It's gorgeous. No, I mean, I, as soon but, as the Netflix thing drops, I've got one day off and then I start the new talk. Okay, so this is what's incredible is you do the Netflix thing and then that's out. And people watch that. Then there's the sense that, is there the sense that I have got to reinvent the wheel now? Because, no, you, you, but but this is the stoic thing. You do it every every night, every night of the tour. At the end of ninety minutes, I pull out a piece of paper from my pocket. I think I've got the one from last night with new jokes written on it, and I try the new jokes. Great. And so every night you try new stuff, and then so at the end of a year, you know, you know, let's say you do ten jokes a night, and half of them work. Well, at the end of the year, you have the new show, and then you sort of retry them and. Uh, you know, be to test or whatever, and you're kind of you're building up, you're building up, you're building up. Then obviously you do a couple of previews where you put it all in a row and see does it make sense, and are there you know too many things that are similar or what? But it's do you it's have there. jokes that you tell that don't work, but you enjoy them, so you keep them in? I've got no, not not much. I think the uh, I, I'm in the service industry. 
Uh, well, and ultimately, we all are. But it's <laughs> we all are. I'm just not sure what the service is here. Uh, <laughs> the, we're, we're called time wasters, Incorporated. <laughs> we're here to waste an hour of your fucking time, Jimmy, <laughs> to get you to the grave. But that thing of that thing of like the everyone leaves this podcast calling their representation. What was, what that? was that? I'm a busy man. What a waste of time. He Wait. used to be on the telly. <laughs> See, I did that for you as well. This is, but now he's on the talkie. Maybe we should maybe we should record this at double speed. A lot of people listen at double speed. I think we should start recording at double speed. Oh my God. Uh, what was I talking about? Gags? I don't know. Um, uh, so testing, I write some things and I love, I suppose it's that thing though. The audience is a genius. Lenny Bruce said that first, I think. Yep. And the audience tell you what is and what isn't funny and what is and what isn't acceptable. And you tell the joke, and sometimes an audience just stares back at you and it's nothing. Right. It's very rare you can rescue one of those. Sometimes you tell a joke and it just gets a ha, it gets a laugh. Like the, it's B material, it's kind of nothing. It's never gonna make it onto a special or into a tour. It's fine, it's joke shaped, but nothing special. If you really love it, then you go away and you change it and you change it and you change it until eventually it gets a big laugh. But then it's a different joke. Right. But somehow you feel like, oh, well, it's kind of connected to the thing I knew I there was something there. Yeah. Sometimes, and sometimes it comes back years later. Sometimes it's just, you know, it's part of a bigger routine. It's a weird thing with when you do wordplay or puns or something. If you just do one, it's kind of okay. If you do two, eh, fine. If you do three, it's an applause break. If you do sort of three in a row, because it, it's a sort of a feat. Um, so sometimes it's like putting those things together where you've kind of thought of it, it's fine, but actually together with something else, it'll work. You have to be... Uh, cognizant of so much material when you're doing your act, do you ever find yourself not knowing, wait a minute, I don't know. Be be because, Constantly. Be because, you know, I don't know which one goes here because if you say, if you do 300 jokes hmm. and you're at number 211. I'll tell you what the killer is, two shows a night. Yeah. The killer is two shows a night because halfway through the second show and someone's just heckled and you've dealt with that and then you go, the hell am I talking about? Where right. are we? I can't remember what city I'm in. Never mind <laughs> what joke I'm on. Right. And that, I would say, then four seconds of panic is a lifetime. And then obviously you you remember. Yeah. It's all you're always fine, but there's like a moment of a. Oh, here we are. I I have had that moment. I know exactly where I was. I was at the Beacon Theater because I was just back there, and this was a number of years ago, and and things were going great, but at one point. I absolutely forgot not only where I was in my act, but why I was, who I was, <laughs> am I dressed? I mean, everything just went away this and is, I remember- This is your DMT story. Yeah, exactly, yeah. And then, so you, why did I lick the back of a frog before walking on stage? What was I, what was I thinking? That's not my pre-show ritual. I thought I'd try a new ritual. Um, I didn't know it was that kind of frog. And so I, but what happens is I, you almost feel like you've drifted out of your body, but then you realize I can't. There's so many people here watching. There's a, whatever, 2000 people here watching, whatever it is. I need to get back in there and figure this shit out. So you go through this whole journey and you do it. And then I realized later on, if you were watching in the audience, you're watching three seconds. Yeah. But to me, it felt like this journey to get, to get back into myself. It's it's interesting, that thing of like, it's a, it's a lovely experience as well to be on stage and to be sort of that present. You sometimes have a moment like that, but it's, mm -hmm. it's kind of fine. It's interesting, that thing of like, it's a very unique experience, always kind of being on stage. People sort of go, I do a lot of dates on the tour and people sort of go, oh, you, know, you get bored of it or whatever, but it always feels different. You get to travel, you get to go to different places, the different audience, it feels different every show. So it's kind of that, it's like a unique experience. And I always think like people don't want more time they want more memories. Yes. And actually doing this sort of job, you just sort of, you meet interesting people, you chat to interesting people, it's always kind of a bit different. It's, it's good for that, I think.